Uh, this poem is called Lifeguards. In first grade, I was waving. In second grade, I was waving. In third grade, I was drowning. Sixth grade, I was waving again. Ninth grade, I was drowning. 10th grade, drowning. 11th grade, drowning. 12th grade, drowning. I didn't become a teacher because I loved high school. I did it for the money. <laughs> when I was 12 years old, my mother went to see a fortune teller. The lady told my mom that one day I would pull a drowning boy from water and that I would spend the rest of my life trying to save people. I thought about becoming a lifeguard, but I'm afraid of sharks and I look weird with my shirt off. So I wear sweater vests to work and when I see young people waving in the halls, I look twice just to make sure they're not drowning. Sometimes fortune tellers get it right. Sometimes they don't. You know what? I'm sorry. Excuse me, sir. Would you put your phone away, please? I asked you to hold all questions until the end. No, you may not go to the bathroom. Don't make me call your parents. You in the back, get your head up. People, be quiet. Sit down. No, you may not go to the bathroom. Don't make me repeat myself. Don't make me repeat myself. <sighs> Maybe I should have become a lifeguard. Maybe I did. I mean, yeah, we work opposite seasons, but we have more in common than you think, teachers and lifeguards. We both got into it for the right reasons. Well, some of us did. Some of us got into it for the children. Some of us for the summers. Parents rely on us and teenagers ignore us. But everyone seems to think we have it easy. Lifeguards and teachers. We were gonna save the world. But we spent more time blowing our whistles, telling kids to stop running than we ever did diving in and saving people. Teachers and lifeguards. Each August adds another five years to our faces. But we are not the only ones. No matter what you choose to do with your life, it probably won't go as you plan. Lawyers got into it to find the truth, but they're too busy looking for technicalities. Doctors got into it to heal people, but they're too busy checking insurance cards. Police officers got into it for the chase, but they're too busy filling out paperwork. Some of our hearts are bigger than our hands. So we'll spend the next off season wondering if we're doing what we're supposed to. Then some random Tuesday, a 15 year old kid with a shaved head will wave to us and we'll decide to do it all over again. Thank you. This is called Counting. After another student committed suicide at our school, I walked into Kyle's classroom and I asked him, is this something I'm gonna have to deal with for the next 25 years of my career? Is this part of the job? The anger, the frustration, the selfishness, they leak through my words and stain my question. I have to do something. Suicide is just one symptom of the complex adversity that everyone fights. Everyone, students with scholarships, students with debt, teachers that are loved because they make their students think and those that are loved because they don't, everyone. Moms, mayors, poets, basketball players, people who struggle to pay rent, and those who struggle to collect it. Do I need to list you all? Everyone, taxi drivers, baristas, part-time bookshop employees, military personnel, people on YouTube, guys who sold summer pest control and now drive motorcycles made out of money with beautiful girls on the back that never wear helmets. You, you are fighting problems that other people see as plastic, but they are as urgent as air. Graphic designers, problems hidden like nightmares, stand-up comedians, problems silent like cancer, electrical engineers. This is not about suicide, your favorite role model. This is not about your school accountants. This is not about your religion, everyone. Everyone can cry hard enough to shake their body. Can you hear this? People tell me I'm not an English teacher. They say I'm supposed to be an eyes forward jailer, a here's a journal to write in, I promise I won't read it, 
counselor. Hey, that better be on my desk by Monday manager. Hey, hey, what's up? How was your weekend, best friend? You can do better, parent. I thought I signed up to be a, you know what? That sentence doesn't actually need a comma, English teacher. When did I pick up all of these other occupations? But there are voices I can't hear anymore. And they're echoing the ones I can. And they tell me not to cop out, that I signed up for all of these jobs and more the day that I was born. And if I forgot, I should look in the copy of my contract. Maybe I lost it somewhere in my conscience. After all, that is where humanity files such fine print. Can you hear this? Do you offer extra credit but keep deadlines alive? Do you ask people to revise their entire lives? Do you teach them to follow the formulas but still think for themselves intellectually? civically, emotionally, individually, collectively, we have to be something more than our byline. Thank you. <laughs> Kyle and I, with a couple other teachers, we put on an open mic poetry night every year called Speak for Yourself. Last year, about 265 students showed up after school to watch 30 students perform original poetry. We asked them to live tweet the session, and here is what they had to say. Some of them quoted their favorite lines. Some of them talked about how inspired they felt. And one of our students actually got a request from our principal to, for a copy of her poem. Everybody has a lot of fun at that night. High school students need poetry. It's an abstract tool to deal with the abstract problems of their life that weigh on their shoulders like wet cement. When a student gets up to take the microphone and risks their identity, when they speak a self-truth, a capital T truth, it always ends with an implied question. Did you get it? Do you get me? And when students applaud, they're learning unsolicited empathy. High school students need poetry. For our final performance, we'd like to show a video that we made with the help of our student videographer, Ethan Harris, and some of the Lone Peak faculty. This poem deals with our most common theme, which is overcoming adversity. And as we share these types of poems with our students, we're never naive enough to suggest that, that we can eliminate adversity or that we can diminish depression, that we can completely stop suicide from happening. This is just a tool to deal with it. This is just a way of showing them that they're not alone, that we're all in this together. Yesterday, I saw you in the dairy section. I saw you at Vasa Fitness. I saw you a while back in the checkout line. I saw you in Nauvoo, Illinois. I saw you at the San Diego Wild Animal Park. I was picking up milk, and you were picking up eggs. I think you thought I was judging your cart. And when you saw me, you stopped. Because it's weird to see your teachers at the store. Like, we don't drink milk. Like, we don't eat eggs. You don't see us as real people. Which explains why you dashed behind the two leaders and tried to blend in. You see us as tyrants, dictators, rule makers, and phone takers. The students of Lone Peak, we see you. We see you push open doors, darkness, and hope. We see you in halls and seats and every other better get an A and B perfect day. We 
we see you. With your head down, headphones in, heading out to your car so you don't have to eat lunch alone. We see you. Flat brim, blonde hair, undress coated, student body sweater, long guitar, PDA, couple of kids, searching. You are more than your outfit. You are more than your makeup. You're more than whatever side of the night they let you sit. You are more than the sport you play and the one you don't. More than a GPA, ACT, AP, honors, regular classification on a college application, regardless of whether you're something. We don't know everything, although sometimes we act like we do. We see the cars you drive, but we don't know the roads you take to get home. We see your eyes, silent hurricane. But we don't see what's behind your vision. The meteorologists predict the thunderstorms. But you don't watch the weather anymore, because that forecast never seems to change. We see you. We remember. I was told I'd never play college basketball. My freshman year, I was the new kid in school and spent my lunches wandering the halls. I earned a C minus on my first calculus test. My son came to my husband and I and told us he was a heroin addict. We've been there. You guys go 80s dancing on Friday nights. And so did we. In the 80s. And depending on the day, we're still there because battlefields will grow like wildflowers everywhere you bloom. I was rejected to be an EFY counselor three years in a row. I struggled with depression. They told me I wasn't smart enough to attend a Division I school because I got a 15 on my ACT. When I was 21, I had to repeat 7th through 12th grade. Maybe you feel worthless. Maybe you feel nothing at all. And so you weren't born knowing five languages or playing eight instruments or being so charismatic that AP Calculus calls you just to hang out. So you can't touch the rim and you haven't had your first kiss. And we marked you absent yesterday even though you were sitting in the front row. We just want you to know. This is not the end. High school was never supposed to be the end. It's too early to draw the final conclusion. This proof is incomplete. This is not your denouement. It's not the fourth quarter. This is not the curtain call. I ended up working for EFY for five summers and was actually asked to be on their commercial. I now have two master's degrees and I'll start working on a PhD next year. I love riding my motorcycle. I love going to concerts and singing with a thousand other people at the top of my lungs. I like watching the kids' face light up after they've worked really hard and they get the grade that they wanted. It's a little known fact that when you apply for adulthood, happiness reviews your resume, looking for at least one bad day, if not 14 in a row, so that you and the moon both know what it's like to fight back to full. We see you fight the fighters that don't have fists. Sometimes knocked down, but never knocked out. It's one of our favorite things about you. This is us cheering you on. Because life goes 12 rounds if you're lucky, and we're all bound to get a little bloody. Our hearts have always carried more than two liters. So come out from behind those drinks. I don't care if all that you have is go-gurt in your car. Some days it may feel easier to just throw in the towel, to quit, to give up. But this, this is, is us asking, telling, begging you to take that towel, to take your life and wring it out. Shove doubt to the bottom of your backpack and don't ever bring it out. You can do this. You can do this. We believe in you. And when they call your name at graduation, we'll call you patience. We'll call you courage. We'll call you hope and say we saw it all. Congratulations. You did it. And you can do it again. <laughs>